I've yet to be able to look at the various devices out there for getting updates on the Sunday ticket trial today. As of yesterday, what I found was the AP article that summarized portions of the Roger Goodell testimony and had that great quote from the Jerry Jones testimony where he froze astray at the Cincinnati Bengals. And if you've watched me talk about this in the past, first of all, thank you. Second of all, you'll remember that I will say, hey, if the NFL's broadcast antitrust exemption ever goes away and the teams have to sell their rights individually, the Cowboys will get billions for theirs and then they'll be the teams at the other end. And I don't want to name them because they know who they are. Well, Jerry named one of them. He said, our TV rights would be worth far more than the Bengals. Well, the truth is his TV rights would be worth far more than anyone's. I think he specifically mentioned the Bengals because there's this history of acrimony between him and Mike Brown, the owner of the Bengals, over the failure of Brown to really do all he can to generate local revenue that isn't shared. Because there was a, a, a push and pull at one point in the past 15 years about revenue sharing, supplemental revenue sharing, basically evening it out anymore. Because what was happening was you've got the major revenues that are shared, the TV money. Then you've got the local revenues that aren't shared and they were getting out of whack. So what happens is when the salary cap is determined by all the revenues earned, local and shared, all that money, if there's a disparity, all that money goes into the same bucket, the salary cap and the salary floor end up higher from a percentage standpoint for the teams that don't have the revenue. So their profit margin gets eaten into because their floor is higher, their cap is higher, their revenue is lower. Now, you haven't heard much about that recently. And I think one of the reasons is the TV money has gone up so much that who really cares about the disparities in local revenue? The TV money is what's driving this bus. And the TV money is the thing that's always been shared dating back to the 60s. It was very magnanimous of people like Wellington Mara, the Giants owner, when the Giants were the most attractive property, the New York-based NFL team willing to share revenues with all franchises. It's been that way for 60 years. Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961 created the broadcast antitrust exemption that allows the NFL to sell the packages as a bulk league to the broadcast networks. That's one of the things under attack in this case, because the argument is the premium product, Sunday ticket package, priced at a, at a number aimed at protecting CBS and Fox's investment, that falls beyond the broadcast antitrust exemption and exposes the NFL to antitrust liability. Yesterday, when Roger Goodell testified, predictably, he defended Sunday ticket as a premium product. Jerry Jones is committed to revenue sharing on the TV side. It would be flawed, he said, to do it any other way. Two points for today. One, I've alluded to this at PFT, and I spoke about this on Pardon My Take late Sunday night in the episode that dropped on Monday morning. I think the NFL realizes on the facts it's screwed in this case. And that the NFL, first of all, will do everything it can to still win on the facts. I think the NFL knows it's got the law maybe on its side. Or more accurately, it's got the system on its side. Because what the NFL will do, and let me rewind to the beginning of the current class action. The case was dismissed by the trial court judge. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which encompasses California and other states on the West Coast, reinstated the lawsuit. I think, well, this isn't a reach. I know if the NFL loses, it will appeal to the Ninth Circuit. And then if it loses there, the next path is the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, step one is to get the Supreme Court to even take up the case. Step two, you hope the Supreme Court will overturn the verdict and find, for example, that the broadcast antitrust exemption encompasses the premium product of Sunday ticket. The NFL did nothing wrong. Bang the gavel multi-billion dollar verdict goes away in the blink of an eye. And I had forgotten about this because my internet son, PFT Commoner, and I were joking about the Supreme Court. And if you follow the news, you know about the Clarence Thomas stuff and the 
flag flown upside down by Samuel Alito and PFT commenter made a joke along the lines of a Harlan Crow type trip for Clarence Thomas. And I said that the NFL flag will be flying upside down at the Alito house. And it hit me today. And this is the sickness that I have. I have many personality afflictions, but one is I spend way too much time thinking about this shit. I was laying in bed this morning, kind of coming out of whatever the weird dreams are that we have that we partially remember and mostly forget. And I remembered last year when Clarence Thomas was first in the spotlight for this issue of, is he receiving benefits he shouldn't be receiving? There was the thing about the Cowboys and the Super Bowl ring he got from Jerry Jones and the connection to Jerry Jones and Jerry Jones putting a word salad out there to try to downplay all of it. If this case ends up before the U.S. Supreme Court, and if Clarence, Tom, Clarence Thomas is still on the Supreme Court at the time, will he step down? Will he recuse himself? There's been a stubbornness about the Supreme Court justices acting the way that I always thought judges would and should when they're in a situation where they are compromised. So would Clarence Thomas step aside in that case? Now, he hasn't stepped aside in a, another high-profile case that deals with an issue that he's been involved in via emails and other communications his wife engaged in at the time the events were happening. And you've got the Alito thing with the wife flowing the, flying the flag upside down and Alito saying it was her, it wasn't me, and basically I can't force her to fly it straight up or whatever it was, whatever it was. Look, I don't want to make this political. My point is this. The NFL's silver bullet could be the Supreme Court. And even if they get hit for a $7 billion verdict that gets trebled to $21 billion, Ninth Circuit, then the U.S. Supreme Court, and maybe Clarence Thomas delivers on that Super Bowl ring. Maybe he earns himself another one if the Cowboys ever get back. First, you got to get to the NFC Championship game before you can even get to the Super Bowl, and it's been 28 years. So Clarence Thomas probably had that Super Bowl ring for a while. It's at least 28 years old, if not older than that.